So today I want to talk about the Star Spangled Banner Axe. Yes, this is legit. Several locations in the United States have begun the process of making it mandatory to play or sing the National Anthem of the United States, the Star Spangled Banner, before certain events, usually sporting events. Now, if this comes as a shock to you, you're probably from outside the United States, because this kind of behavior and display of pure nationalism is a unique affair of the United States. Contrary to the reality of the United States, most countries don't play their anthems before events, unless, of course, they're international events in which the other country wants to be represented. Um, that said, in most other countries, students don't typically pledge allegiance to a flag or loyalty to a flag before they start their school days. There's a level of patriotism and nationalism that has become quite acceptable in the United States that I think is often um, forgotten about and is brushed under the reality of living in the United States. So with that said, there's a lot to unpack here. The three places I have found that are attempting to do this and create the Star Spangled Banner Acts are Texas, Wisconsin, and Arkansas. So first and foremost, I need to get this out of the way. It strikes me as such an American, you know, United States perspective to be in a country in which the laws of mandating a national anthem to be sung are being supported by the same politicians who felt that wearing a mask during a pandemic was a violation of liberty and freedom. Again, the idea that wearing a mask during a pandemic was somehow a violation of freedom, but the uh, singing and the compulsory singing of a national anthem, which is a clear violation of the First Amendment because it's forced government speech, is somehow acceptable to these same politicians. And that is absurd and ridiculous. And I do need to point out that courts are probably going to tear these laws apart if they ever do get passed. But again, the idea that they are being passed and thought of in the first place is part and parcel to the problems of the United States. And so they are worth going over, especially as these perspectives are being used in an act of culture war by the Republican Party. So with that said, let's take a look at Texas first and foremost. So what is going on is that in Texas, the Star Spangled Banner is being um, required by Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and potential legislation to back it, which is Senate Bill 4, to force sporting teams to have to perform the anthem before their games. And this was done because the Dallas Mavericks, the NBA team, their owner, Mark Cuban, actually made headlines last month when he said he would not play the national anthem before home games to support those who did not feel represented by the anthem. Now, the response of the governor of Texas said is that it is hard to believe that this could happen in Texas, but Mark Cuban's react, uh, actions of yesterday made it clear that we must specify that in Texas, we play the national anthem before all major events. Patrick said in a press release on February 10th, in this time when so many things divide us, sports are one of the things that bring us together. Right, left, black, white, brown, this legislation already supports broad support. I am certain it will pass and the Star Spangled Banner will not be threatened in the Lone Star State again. Now, later that day, the NBA had announced that all teams would be forced to do this, and as a private entity, the NBA technically has the right to make that happen within their teams and everything else. But the law is still being put forward. As a matter of fact, uh, it's going to be examined for a public hearing on March 26th, and the language of the bill is ex pretty... pretty um, problematic in the fact that the penalty for this uh, not being followed is that teams that did not follow the agreement uh, would be required to repay any money that has been paid to the team by any state or governmental entity or become ineligible for further money in the future. Now, ignoring the fact that uh, the politics of money going into sports teams and tourism and all that and how that manifests in cities and how problematic that can be is, you know, being taken into account. Ignore all that for a minute. This is a harsh penalty to impose for not um, 
you know, not performing some sort of compulsory speech by the government. And that is, again, extremely, extremely problematic in that regard. Now, to make this all worse, Texas's governor should be focused on bigger issues, like the fact that the power grid just recently went out and failed and really just caused a lot of harm and killed people in Texas. And this is not being addressed or handled properly. There was price gouging going on, and I've heard nothing on the details of what's gone on with that from the electric companies towards the people of Texas. So instead of dealing with real issues about the pandemic and the electric grid and, you know, some of the infrastructure issues in Texas, we'd rather talk about the fact that the national anthem isn't being sung in sporting events. And this is the priority of these Republican politicians. Now, to make matters worse, this very similar mindset is going through the uh, perspective of a senator by the name of Patrick Teston in Wisconsin who has basically said that Wisconsin's version of a Star-Spangled Banner Act would require the anthem to be played before all sporting events in venues that have received taxpayer funding. That would include all home games for the Green Bay Packers, Milwaukee Brewers, and Milwaukee Bucks. Hearing the Star-Spangled Banner at a sporting event reminds us that despite our differences, we have something in common. We're Americans, Tessin said in a statement. It's a practice that unites us, and I believe it's worth preserving. It's also been, um, you know, th an issue, right? Like, this Star-Spangled Banner and the National Anthem being sung has been an issue going back all the way to 2016, and certainly way before then. But if we go back to 2016, when um, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, began to kneel during NFL games as a protest to the racial injustice, that protest grew throughout the NFL. And the kneeling towards the anthem was done as a sign of support to Kaepernick's message. And this has expanded over the years into the BLM protest, where more recently the NBA has been the locus of racial protests, again after the police shot uh, Jacob Black, the Kenosha man, in, uh, back, uh, in August, back in August. The Bucks protested by actually refusing to leave the locker room for a playoff game. And that set in motion a broader strike in the NBA teams that extended across the professional sports. So in January, the Bucks took a knee in protest at the beginning of the game um, after the prosecutors denied the charge of the Kenosha officer with a crime for the shooting. Now, the response to this particular law, or, or bill rather, that is being proposed, uh, has been one to basically shoot it down because it doesn't really do anything, uh, you know, effective. The representative, uh, Katrina Shankland, a Democrat from Wisconsin, has flat out said the people of Wisconsin are counting on the legislature to focus on pandemic relief, a strong economic recovery, and ensuring efficient and equitable vaccine distribution. In a statement to WPR, this proposed legislation doesn't solve a problem and doesn't tackle the issues that struggling families, workers, and small business want us to work on together. And I think that's part of the broader problem that's going on here. As we have attempts to enforce the nationalizing of a national anthem at sporting events, it's ignoring the major issues that are going on across the United States. And these types of platitudes, these very nationalistic, uh, bombastic platitudes of forcing people to enter into patriotic stances on things, does not fix or make the United States a great country. It doesn't fix the fact that the U.S. has a ton of infrastructure problems. It doesn't fix the fact that there are people literally starving in this country, that there are people during this pandemic who are still choosing between food, medicine, and rent, and that this has been a historic thing that is a problem of capitalism that just keeps getting expounded upon with crisis after crisis. Now, you know, the issue is that as long as the Republicans and these politicians keep putting out this idea of this nationalistic sense of greatness, eventually, if you proclaim it enough times, people will believe it. And if the country starts to believe it and people start to believe it, then people's eyes start to shift the blame. No longer is it the United States that's responsible for all of these things. It can't be capitalism that's responsible. It's the fault of the people who did not just grab the greatness that is the United States. States like the people who did. 
And that creates really problematic narratives of nationalism and patriotism that leads in the direction of a lot of the fascist rhetoric that we tend to see forming in the United States. And that has existed, quite honestly, on an inter you know, in the U.S.'s policies in an international scale. Now, at the same time, um, you know, this whole idea of it being a unifying position where everybody can band together, it doesn't matter left and right and black and brown, it doesn't, you know, and white, it doesn't matter, right? Like, that's the claim that these people are making. But the reality couldn't be further from the truth, especially when we look at who's kneeling in these games and who is responding to it. This thing that's going unspoken here is that the majority of athletes in both football and basketball are black. 58.9% of football players and 74.2% of basketball players are black, and forcing them to be present for the national anthem as a form of compulsory speech is problematic at best. You know, there's a reason that black athletes are taking the knee. It's not, you know, just for kicks or anything. They don't feel represented by a national anthem, especially as black people are being killed in the streets at a disproportionate rate by cops. They're not having their needs and infrastructure met. Like, everything is being ignored. People of color still have not received any sort of reparations for slavery or for the indigenous genocides that have occurred or anything else that has occurred in this country. And, you know, there is a continued reality of a white supremacist system that goes on in ways that I can't even begin to start listing here without me going on and on. You know, and um, the fact is the national anthem itself actually has a racist history. And I don't have the time in this video to cover all of that, so I'm going to be covering it in a video tomorrow, because it very much is worth talking about just how the national anthem itself is a issue in terms of its racism, both in how it was created, who it was created by, what its actual lyrics state, and um, how it ended up becoming the anthem itself. So I'll talk about that tomorrow in full detail. But for now, I want to put it out there that what has been done in a lot of games to represent the population who has felt, you know, disrespected by the national anthem and people who have not been drawn to it, there has been a second anthem that has been sung at certain games, which is Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is known as the Black National Anthem in the United States. And perhaps this song could be a more unifying perspective and concept than that presents the truthful reality uh, more so to Black Americans especially than the Star Spangled Banner and for many of these athletes in particular. So I think that is worth noting. With that said, let's jump into the situation in Arkansas. So in Arkansas, what is happening is the Attorney General there, Leslie Rutledge, has come out with two pieces of legislation as part of the Faith and Family Freedom Acts. The first bill is again called the Star Spangled Banner Act, which requires public schools in Arkansas to play the Star Spangled Banner at the start of school sanctioned sporting events, not even major events, but the school sanctioned sporting events. There is no way to interpret this outside of pure indoctrination. This is students being indoctrinated with the gloriousness of everything that I've mentioned before, the greatness of America, right before their sporting events during school. I don't know if that level of practically religious worship of the state needs to be present at the beginning of school sporting events. Furthermore, she has argued for the second act, uh, which is the Moment of Silence Act which would amend the current state law to mandate that the Arkansas Board of Education implement a policy that requires public school districts to have a moment of silence and reflection after students recite the Pledge of Allegiance at the start of each day. Now, this is problematic for reasons that may not be obvious to everyone. There is a history in the United States where prayer was actually a part of the daily routine in schools. And this is a hearkening back to that. The idea that prayer could be enforced in schools is not really a valid one. That's going to get thrown out immediately. But if you put it under the guise of presenting a moment of silence every day during the school day, 
you can basically create that moment where after the national anthem, which is the last thing you've thought of, you have a moment to think about God and country and further indoctrinate yourself into that mindset. And this is a part of the indoctrination process in the United States. And quite honestly, this statism and this worship of the state is kind of sick. This nationalism is not something that we should need to purport if we actually are such a great country. And I think it just proves the fact of the insecurities of the American ideals that we are nowhere near where we think we're supposed to be. And I just want to put a little honorable mention out there. While this is not a law in particular, the state of Tennessee, specifically in Nashville, and I want to just provide this as an example of the patriotism of the United States, if you're watching this as someone from outside the U.S. especially, to see what we're talking about and what I'm talking about here. The perspective of the state of, Nash of Tennessee, the city of Nashville, is that millions of local news viewers across the country get up and watch up-and-coming artists from Nashville sing the national anthem every morning. It's a project that News 2 started two years ago. Each morning before the start of Good Morning Nashville, the Star Spangled Banner rings out. And one person who did this singing, Cassidy Daniels, an aspiring artist, said it's a true act of patriotism. I really, really feel it in my soul when I have to do things like this. And she goes on to talk about her father serving in the armed forces, her mom being a detective her passion for music and how her dad was deployed to Iraq. And, you know, the singing the song was a therapy for her while he was gone. And then it goes on to say that the um, director of operations at Oceanway, Pat McMacken, states, it reinforces what we believe. We believe in the values of this nation, and we love the idea of supporting specifically the national anthem because it's a time when that needs to be played. What does that even mean, a time that it needs to be played? What is, what is the, the reasoning behind that? There is no logical reasoning behind it. It is pure nationalism. So every morning at 4 a.m., you can watch the national anthem start at the beginning of the news broadcast in Nashville. And this is the kind of nationalism and patriotism that is seen throughout the United States that creates indoctrination in schools through the Pledge of Allegiance and through all these other things like singing the uh, national anthem before school events, before major sporting events. It is a tradition to sing it. And again, this is a problematic piece which I'll go into more details tomorrow, but it's problematic. And, you know, within all of that framework, not everybody in this country feels represented by it. Not everybody in this country feels comfortable having it represent them. This is an issue in the United States. And more than anything, we need to stop servicing platitudes towards our greatness and actively work towards fixing our infrastructure and stop bombing other countries. Then maybe we can start talking about our greatness. Maybe we can stop, you know, destroying other nations across the world while building our own. Stop turning our military out to the world and turn it inward and start sending our military funding into funding people and the needs of people. Then, and only then, can we really start talking about our greatness. Because until that moment, they're just platitudes. They're just us literally talking about a greatness that doesn't exist. So with that said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter and check out my Discord in the description down below. My name is Anarchist Tara, and I hope you enjoyed watching.